What's up, Meta Monsters? This is Dawson from Meta Athletics. I'm gonna be taking you through my personal journey of how I made my 60 meter speed transformation. So this is the year that I made the most progress in the 60 meter. I went from a 717 down to a 696. I'll be discussing things that I focused on in that year, some mistakes that I was making in the previous years, and what really pushed the needle on my speed to allow me to make that transformation. And hopefully by the end, you can learn a thing or two and make a similar transformation in your speed for your sport or your event in track and field. So to give this a little context, I was a university sprinter for a couple years and I was seeing some progress beforehand, but I didn't see as much of a jump in my speed as when I started implementing my own training. So essentially this was the year of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we weren't able to train in a group and I was forced to kind of dive into some training methodology and learn and program for myself. We did have access to the outdoor track, of course, but coaches weren't allowed to be in sessions and we weren't allowed to practice as a group. So I was really on my own. I saw it as an opportunity to kind of learn more about the sport. So this kind of led me to dive into different resources and find different coaches that I could take different training methodologies from. Some people like Les Spellman, Dan Paff, even PJF Performance, just for general athleticism. All of those coaches really helped me a lot in learning more about the sport and more about just training, periodization, and what to focus on. I was even sending some of my videos in order to try and learn more and help improve my start. Looks pretty good. I was making a lot of technical errors in my sprinting. So the more I learned about technique, the more I realized I had a pretty bad cycle coming out of the blocks. I was broken at the hips, uh, my arms were a little weird, and I just wasn't that powerful in general. As far as the top speed sprinting, I had a little bit of excessive backside mechanics, which I kind of had to address, but being cognizant of it and trying to have my foot land directly under my center of mass, doing drills like wickets and dribbles, top speed drills definitely helped a lot. So I'd say the biggest things that helped me improve my technique was one, just filming a lot more reps. So whether it be a start or top speed sprinting, I would pretty much film everything. I would reference it back to things I was learning online from different coaches, uh, different videos of pros doing starts, um, elite athletes in general doing starts and top speed mechanics. And I would try and implement that session over session and slowly improve my technique. The second would just be really focusing on technical drills, wall drills, and learning how to switch. So wall drills um, are essentially just leaning your body up at about a 45 degree angle and practicing projecting your foot out and back underneath your body, down under your body like a piston. So that really helped me before acceleration days improving my form. And then the switch was just learning how to switch your limbs. You need to be able to simultaneously retract one leg back and drive one knee forward. As far as top speed sprinting, wickets and dribbles were the two biggest components to improve my top speed mechanics, as well as again, just filming my reps and trying to replicate that figure four at top speed at touchdown. The second thing I focused on this year that I don't think I was getting beforehand was just load management and better periodization slash just volume in general. So we were training sprint sessions, um, back to back days in a row, a lot of nearly demanding work. There wasn't a lot of rest between reps and we did a lot of that kind of older school mentality. The more I looked into it, the more I realized that this isn't how sprinters generally trained. Everything needs to be at a hundred percent to push the needle in your speed and create the adaptations that we need. So a big help in programming my volume was looking into uh, Boo Sheck Snyder's training inventory as well as some of his lectures that kind of spelled out the volume that you should have in each session. Honestly, I didn't do a whole bunch of periodization during this year where I made my speed transformation, but in general, week over week, I was managing my volume a lot better. I was always taking 48 hours between sprint sessions. I was making sure I didn't completely tax my nervous system. I pretty much just stuck with the same weekly schedule of sprinting the entire year because we didn't have any competitions to prep for or look forward to. I guess. So that week schedule for me would look like Monday, acceleration, 
So something like a 10, 20, 30, two or three sets of that. I would prep that using wall drills or A drill switches, something that would kind of cue in those mechanics. Tuesday would be restoration. So a circuit, maybe some technical drills, like to get on turf or grass on these to just kind of strengthen up the feet and ankles but very low level stuff, maybe some low level plyometrics. Wednesday, I generally did top speed. So this would look like flies or in and outs or even anything 50 to 60 meters where you'd hit your top speed in that rep and then cut it off after a second or a second and a half of top speed stimulus. And then to prep that, I would use something like wickets or a dribble series which I thought was really good for kind of tuning in your top speed mechanics. Thursday, another restoration day. And then generally Friday or Saturday would be another acceleration day. This one would be resisted. So I would break out the sled. And I generally preferred the light sleds. And I think the final thing I focused on here was structuring my workouts and the uh, physical training. Um, so I started emphasizing mobility more, hip mobility, using hurdle drills on the restoration days, ankle strengthening, things like that. It's the work that you don't really wanna do that you neglect that I kinda doubled down on on the off days. So I added a lot more weighted plyometrics, hex bar jumps, Olympic lifts, things like that, more ballistic lifting. Again, programming, Boo Shek Snyder's lifting, plus his track and field workouts helped me a lot in this regard. And it also helped me kind of tailor my volume so they weren't taking away from my sprint days. Lifting should be supplemental. It shouldn't be taking away from your track days. It shouldn't have so much volume that it's affecting any of your speed days. And it really should be less overall allotted time than your specific sport. So overall, I would say the biggest misconceptions I had were not focusing on technical training enough, just kind of taking the practice for what it was and going through the motions. Sprinting too often, so not having enough rest between sprint days. Too much volume overall, so in the weight room and on the track. I think there was too much sprinting volume and not enough rest between reps and between actual days. And then just too much bodybuilding or random or kind of fancier lifting. The lifting was more compound lifts, Olympic lifts, ballistic lifts, kind of your meat and potatoes. Get what you need out of the weight room and then get out. So it wasn't too much emphasis on the weights. So I know dropping from a 717 to a 696 isn't the biggest transformation, but me being two to three years into sprinting and having a higher training age, this is a pretty significant drop within the span of a year. And this allowed me to try out for a collegiate football team and get a chance to play on that roster. I traveled to New Brunswick in Canada on our national relay team. So it just opened up a lot more opportunities for me and I know, again, it's not the fastest time in the world, but for me to drop off that time, it was huge and it opened up a lot of different opportunities for me. So I hope you can take some value from this and my transformation, and hopefully apply it to your training and make the same transformations and hopefully open up some doors athletically for you. Thanks for listening, Meta Monsters. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff down below and check out all our other socials down below. Peace.